Thank you very much. Thank you for the nice introduction. It's really good to speak in front of a live auditorium again and not just in front of a, a monitor and a camera. Um, here, my financial disclosures, none are relevant to, to this talk. Uh, so you already uh, had a nice introduction. And obviously, when we assess IOLs, uh, we um, look at the very central visual field, if at all. We look at visual acuity, contrast sensitivity, but all um, right in the center. And until now, we've actually put very little emphasis or uh, have no focus on, on looking at what happens in, in the periphery or mid-periphery. Um, but and there is another thing, which is that we know that uh, after cataract surgery, there seems to be an increase in, in accidents. And I think the reasoning for that was always, well, the patients, before they have cataract surgery, they may be less active. And now that they see better again, they become more active, they do things again, and that's why they have an increased risk of having any kind of accident. But it may also be that actually the visual field has changed, meaning that the, 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 the the quality of vision in, in, in the peripheral, in the periphery, is not as good and it, with, with IOLs, um, and, and that's something we've really never assessed. So why is peripheral vision actually critical? Well, we know that for tasks like um, detecting, for example, spatial frequency gratings, which are somewhere in the periphery, or for driving performance, um, of course, are highly dependent on peripheral vision. And it also is of crucial role in mobility as well as posture control. So about you know the, the, when, the, the quick, how quick we can walk and with which safety we can walk. And it's quite clear that if you have peripheral vision deficits, uh, you will have an increased risk of falls. Uh, and and there's a, I'll show you a slide on, on, on just that. So here, the sort of the you know the, the photograph uh, where everything is in focus and, uh, and it has high quality no matter where, which is obviously not what what the human eye does, and this is probably more of a simulation of of, of a normal uh, um, uh, sort of, you know vision, so high uh, spatial frequency and contrast in the center, and then obviously getting less uh, more towards the periphery, and then here a, a very degraded um, a periphery, which obviously. Uh, will cause um, um, some could cause some issues. So the the peripheral vision and its implication on accidents. Uh, it has been shown that peripheral vision loss, and that's obviously also in, in patients, for example, with glaucoma, increases the risk of falls by 1.4 fold. Um, it also worsens the stability, especially in older patients, of posture. And again, there's a direct incidence of of a link to the incidence of falls. Also, if there's an imbalance between the central and peripheral visual parts, this again leads to higher incidence of accidents, and especially for those where you, um, you need to assess heights uh, or have an, any kind of spe spatial awareness, as you could imagine. So again, poor peripheral vision, we know, increases the risk of falls, especially also due to the impairment of circular motion perception. And you've seen this slide in, 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 in a similar way just before from Pablo. Um, the, the issue is that we have a defocused image in the peripheral retina um, uh, with, a, uh, with a standard uh, um, eye, or even in a fake eye, but especially with a standard eye oil. And ideally, we would like to have a, a, much, a much better uh, um, image and also better contrast in order to have a better um, peripheral vision. And also the astigmatism plays a major role because you get a lot of astigmatism, especially in the peripheral retina. So here again, this image you've seen, this issue um, and, and the idea of, of this new inverted meniscus to actually give you a better optical performance in the periphery. And this is probably the cr most critical slide of this uh, entire talk, um, which actually shows now that the, the comparison of this new type of IOL shown in blue uh, compared to a control lens, which is a standard biconvex IOL. And you can see here for, on the left side for peripheral defocus and on the right side for peripheral astigmatism. And what you can see is there is a very clear dis dif difference, um, especially here now in the temporal visual field, of two diopters of peripheral defocus with a standard lens, which is essentially neutralized uh, by, uh, by this new meniscus type of IOL. And similarly here also in peripheral astigmatism, there is a significant decrease in the peripheral astigmatism. So the central, the central um, 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 defocus or astigmatism is actually very similar as you would expect, but in the periphery, the differences are significant. And this is quite a big study actually of 158 eyes and 61 control eyes. 
So uh, what can you do now? We can also um, try to assess, and this is always a little difficult, especially with elderly patients. Um, we've also tried to do that um, previously in, in, a, in, a, in a study, um, assessing a peripheral um, visual quality, is to do eccentric contrast sensitivity tests. So the patient um, fixates um, a, a fixation point, and then there is a monitor, a computer monitor, at, at, in this case an eccentricity of 45 degrees. And you can then show um, the patient, you know, contrast uh, gradings, and the patient has to identify um, um, in which direction they go. So you can essentially identify the contrast detection sensitivity, in this case at 45 degrees. And what you can see here is there is a, a, a significant difference um, between the standard control le uh, lens and the new meniscus-shaped lens. So we obviously have better contrast sensitivity in the periphery or in the mid-periphery of the visual field. Now the question is, how does that affect your, you know, your doing, your performance in daily life and your functional vision? So this is again a simulated image. This is the way a camera sees it. Everything is in focus. You can see a step here. You can see here the, the sign for where, where you need to go if there's, a, if there's an emergency. And for a standard lens, obviously you will have a lot of, um, let me say, blur here because of the induced astigmatism and the defocus. And this would be a simulation of what we would expect uh, with a better visual field. So you would expect, for example, to see the step better um, and, and be able to identify it more readily and easily. So here, uh, um, some nice uh, experiments which were done and now, in this case, inducing peripheral astigmatism uh, with spectacles um, um, and, and uh, walking through over this, um, this, let me say, two steps. Um, and you can, uh, obviously, with these uh, small attached lights, you can do an exact tracking of the feet while, while they're walking, and you can see that in the, in the right bottom in that graph for the right and the left foot. And now what you can do is you can now take a planar lens and then have the same subject do this with a cylinder induction, so, so inducing astigmatism with, with a cylinder lens. And what you can see is that both the time needed uh, with, with the astigmatism, um, as well as also the safety of, of the foot put in, being put down is, is, is uh, significantly different uh, in, in this setting. So here you can see the foot misplacement in the first step is already the first problem, therefore also uh, not less stable, and also very cautious. You can see there was actually an extra step which was done with, with the induced astigmatism. So here you can see the effects of this um, slightly worse uh, peripheral or semi-peripheral vision. Now putting that into, into numbers, here uh, at the, the, the start off and then the time, looking at the time of doing this kind of, um, of this exercise of, of stepping over these uh, blocks uh, with low power um, astigmatism and then with a high powered uh, astigmatism induction with the spectacles and you can see that in several of the subjects there is a significant increase of doing this, um, this, uh, this gate um, experiment. So that actually really shows uh, the, the, um, um, the impact of, of the peripheral visual field. Now here I'm just going to show you a just a few um, uh, uh, data on, on, on the few lenses we have done just recently because we only started end of, uh, end of August and these are just the first four patients, so very little and I feel a little, um, um, yeah, I mean, Enos is gonna show much more data, so I, I, I've, <laughs> Well, that's, that's the only data I have at the moment. But just to show you that the lens uh, in, in, in standard cataract patients um, with uh, actually very good um, um, uh, refractive outcomes, very close to emetropia or to what we were um, expecting. Uh, you can see here the um, IOL Master 700 images with the lens in place um, um, after surgery. Here an image um, of the lens uh, uh, in retroillumination. And then here you can see the meniscus uh, shape of the lens uh, in a dilated pupil uh, with the anterior, uh, anterior segment OCT as well as with the IOL master. Um, and, and so, you know, that, that's pretty straightforward. The lens is very simple to implant and, and, and really is, needs no extra effort. Here's some uh, acuity data, both uncorrected and distance corrected, as well as intermediate vision. We had some patients actually with very good intermediate vision and some with moderate. And in general, the, if you look at, for example, the CatQuest questionnaire also 
um, a satisfactory or very satisfactory outcomes, which actually no difficulties in most of the activated, uh, activities which are listed in the in the nine questions of the CAT Quest uh, questionnaire. So, to summarize, this is a lens which uh, uh, with, which improves what we call the peripheral defocus and peripheral astigmatism, and therefore also improves contrast sensitivity, as I showed you. Um, and this may lead to less risk of falls, to better object recognition, better driving performance, which obviously still needs to be illustrated and shown. And, and I believe in general um, for patients, hopefully more freedom of movement and locomotion, meaning regaining of independence, uh, which I think is very important, especially in these elderly patients we're dealing with in the cataract surgery arena. Thank you very much.